please stand by. Good afternoon, everyone. It's time for Stratomatic Baseball. Spokane Steve with you. And we've got a ball game today. It's going to be the Chicago Cubs at the New York Mets. Kind of fitting it would be the Mets today. I didn't plan it that way, but as you probably know, we lost catcher Jerry Grody yesterday. Grody passed away at the age of 81. Big part of that Miracle Mets team, and he's playing in today's game as well. And hello, Kenyon. Welcome, sir. How are you doing? So we're still on May 6th. This is the first of a four-game series. The Cubs will have lefty Ken Holtzman on the mound. He's 1-1 one one on the season so far. Rob Gardner, also a lefty. Had to look at that. He's 0-2 on the season so far. I have gotten Gardner pit mixed up with the right-handed Gardner who pitched in the early 90s, maybe late 80s through the 90s. Montreal, I believe. Mark Gardner was his name, I think. And welcome to Mike C. as well. Gardner was a guy, I was living in Las Vegas in the summer of 1990, and Gardner was a guy I liked to bet against. <laughs> That's Mark Gardner, not this Gardner. The pitching matchup would appear to favor the Cubs in this game, although you can see by the real life score, it was a tight one, and did not favor the Cubs. Let's look at the replay stats here. Holtzman has made... Three appearances, two starts. He's one and one. His ERA and even two, he has one complete game. 18 innings, 17 hits with 16 strikeouts. Gardner's been in three games, two of them starts. 0 and 2 with a 9.58 ERA, 10 and a third innings, 14 hits, only six strikeouts. He's also given up four home runs in those 10 innings. So Gardner's been beaten around. Holtzman has pitched well. What will happen today? Well, let's find out. Here is the Cubs lineup for today's game. It's going to be Adolfo Phillips leading off in center. Glenn Beckert in the two spot. Billy Williams moved over to right field again, hitting third. Ron Santo in the cleanup spot. John Bacabella bats fifth. Byron Brown sixth. Randy Hundley, the catcher, hits seventh. Don Kessinger batting eighth and Holtzman batting ninth. The Mets defensively, of course, the late Jerry Grody. The recently departed Jerry Grody, just yesterday once again, will be behind the plate catching Gardner. The infield, Ed Crane Poole at first, Eddie Brasseau at second, Mr. Shortstop McMillan at short, Ken Boyer at third, and the outfield from left to right of Swoboda, Cleon Jones, and Hickman. Yeah, R.I.P. Jerry Grody, definitely. I don't know what he died from. They mentioned it on a game I was watching yesterday on the MLB.com network or the MLB Network. I guess they're owned by the same company, right? Anyway, we're ready to go in this one. Phillips steps in. Gardner, the lefty, gets the sign. Phillips hitting 244, two home runs, eight runs batted in. 
And the sign from Grody, and here's the pitch. It's going to be a 4-8 right-handed base hit into left field. So Phillips with a sharply hit single, and we are underway. Phillips has wheels. Star 17 Steeler, let's check the Mets' battery. A 0 for Gardner, a minus 1 for Grody. So he'd be a 16, held on a 14. He will be held on, of course. And here's Glenn Beckert. And he can try for that lead, 1 to 14. 3 through 7, he does not get it. And here's Beckert. Beckert leads the club in batting at 390. That places him among the league leaders. No home runs, but seven runs batted in. Gardner working from a stretch now. Here's the pitch, a 5-7 right-handed. It's double to 12 out of 14. That'll be a long single. Phillips rounds and churns into third, and the Cubs are in business right off the bat here. First and third, nobody out, and here comes Billy Williams. Now, Williams, as we know, got off to a very slow start, but he's been hot of late. His overall number is 241, four homers, 11 RBIs. The four homers leads the ball club, and he went quite a few games at the start of the season without a homer, so most of his damage has come recently. And there's Jack Brooks. Welcome. Spring-like day. Oh, so you noticed it. Yeah. How will the Mets play this situation? Early in the game, nobody out. They're going to play at double play depth. Left on left now. The pitch to go. 3-5. It's a high fly ball to right field. That's going to drop down into the corner. Hickman rounding it up. In comes Phillips. Beckert's coming in to score. And Williams into third with a triple. So as we said, Billy heating up. It's a two-run triple. Let's take a look at that. 3-5. Homer to 17. He just missed getting it out of here. The roll is a 20. Billy Williams with a two-run triple, and it's two to nothing Chicago. And here's Santo now. Give me a second. I'm going to refresh the screen so I can see the chat. There we go. Santo comes into the game hitting 292, three homers, nine RBIs. Gardner now into the one. -hand. The pitch to Santo is a 4 8 right handed. Single into left field. Williams will score. RBI single Santo, and it's 3 to nothing Chicago, and the Cubs are all over Rob Gardner here. Four hits in a row, still nobody out. And now Grody's going out to the mound, presumably to calm Gardner down. John Bacabella will be the hitter. He's hitting just 200, 5 for 25. No home runs, one RBI. Bacabella playing first base today. And here's the pitch from the stretch. 110 left-handed. It's a comebacker. Gardner has it. Fires down to McMillan to first. Not in time. That will go as a force. So Bacabella aboard with one down, and here's Byron Brown. Brown hitting just 189. He does have three home runs. Gardner staring in now from the stretch. That's going to be a 1-6 left-handed. It's a high fly ball to deep left field. Swoboda back now, going back on the track, leaps at the wall, and it's gone on a 14. A two-run blast by Byron Brown, and the Cubs have blown the game open. Here in the first inning, let's take another look at that. I just caught an error on my thing. Sano was forced. He didn't score. Williams scored. On a 1-6 against the left-hander, 1-14, to 14, it is a 14. And just like that, it's 5 to nothing Cubs, and there's only one away. And now we will have activity already in the New York pen. Not expecting this. 
In real life, Gardner pitched a complete game. So they're going to need a long man. And their bullpen shorthanded today as it is. So let me look at a couple of the computer-only cards. Dave Eilers is available. And Gordy Richardson's available. God, they're both terrible. Richardson better against lefties. The Cubs primarily a right-handed lineup. Dave Eilers will get loose. And here's Randy Hundley. Randy, the catcher, comes into the game hitting, where is Hundley? Hitting 271, three homers. He still leads the Cubs and Ribbies with 13. So Gardner collects himself, now toes the rubber. Here's the pitch to Hundley. It's a 3-9 ground ball to shortstop. McMillan has it cleanly over to Crane Pool, and there's two away. So perhaps Gardner can survive this. And here's Don Kessinger. Kessinger hitting 262. The pitch from Gardner is a 4-5 right-handed. Another ground ball to shortstop. McMillan to Crane Pool. And mercifully for the Mets fans, the inning comes to an end. But five runs by the Cubs on five hits. Nobody left on. And it's going to be one of those games, it looks like. And the Cubs have a dandy on the mound, too. Lefty Ken Holtzman. So Holtzman staked to a five-run lead here in the bottom of the first. Here's the Mets lineup. Eddie Brissou leading off. Roy McMillan in the two spot. Ken Boyer will bat third. Ron Swoboda in left hitting cleanup. Cleon Jones is in center today batting fifth. Jim Hickman will hit sixth. Ed Cranepool in the seventh spot. And Jerry Grody, the catcher, batting eighth. Gardner hits ninth. Cubs defensively will have Randy Hundley catching Holtzman. Bacabella at first, Beckert, Kessinger, and Santo around the horn in the infield. And in the outfield is Brown in left, Phillips in center, and Williams in right field. So here's Pursue now. Pursue has not played much. He's just three for ten on the season. Holtzman gets the sign, and here's the pitch. It's a four-seven swung on and missed strike three. One down, and here's McMillan, the shortstop. McMillan hitting just 178. He does have a home run and four RBIs. Holtzman into the windup now. Here's the pitch to McMillan. It's a 3-7, and he draws the walk. So a one-out walk to McMillan. And Mr. Shortstop is aboard. Yeah, that's what they called him. I read that in his younger day with uh, Cincinnati, I believe. And here's Ken Boyer. Boyer hitting just 224, one home run, seven RBIs, ties him with Grody for the club lead. The Mets batting only 220 as a team and they have only five home runs. The Cubs, by contrast, 241, 16 home runs. From the stretch now, Holtzman's pitch to Boyer. That's going to be a 2-4 left-handed. It's a comebacker to Holtzman. He goes down to Kessinger to first, not in time. That'll be a force. And Boyer's aboard with two outs. And that will bring up Ron Swoboda. Swoboda hitting just 200, 6 for 30. No homers, one RBI. And here is the pitch from the stretch. To Swoboda. It's a 1-8. Struck him out. So Holtzman comes out and announces his presence with authority. And after one inning of play, it is Cubs 5, Mets nothing. So already stark contrast to the real-life game. Now the question is, how long can Gardner last?
Holtzman will lead things off. He's a right-handed hitter. One W. The pitch from Gardner. That's going to be a 2-10. And he walks him. The only thing, as you guys know, the only thing on a one-hitter's card is the 2-10. And he finds it. And he leads off the inning with a walk. And here's Adolfo Phillips. Phillips led off the game with a single. Scored on Billy Williams' triple, of course. Left on right. Here it is. It's a 3-7 left-handed. Right in his good column. He hits it into left field, but that's going to be playable for Swoboda, who's there to make the catch for the out. So one down. And here comes Glenn Beckert. Beckert also singled his first time up. Gardner working out of the stretch. And welcome to Ben. There's Ben. From the stretch to Becker at 3-6. It's a grounder to third base. Boyer to pursue, and that's all they'll get. So a 5-4 force. And Beckert's aboard with two down. Becker to star 16 stealer. Minus 115. They'll hold him on, making him a 13. And here's Billy. Billy heating up now. Left on left, it's a 5-5. Five, five. Fly ball into center, shallow. Here comes Cleon Jones, still coming. Basket catch to retire the side. So Gardner settles down a bit in the second inning. No runs, no hits, they leave one. And it's still a five to nothing game. Holtzman getting loose for the bottom of the inning. Let me turn the heater down. This happens every day, doesn't it? I don't know why that happens. I start the ball game. Perfectly fine in here, and the heater kicks on. 51 and cloudy, by the way, in Spokane at the moment. And here's Jim Hickman to lead off the bottom of the second. Hickman comes into the game at 184, one homer, four RBIs. Just seven for 38. Holtzman into the windup. The pitch for Hickman. 3 8 left handed. A comebacker. Another worm killer. Holtzman snags it, throws to Bacabella. And there's one down. That'll bring up Ed Cranepool. Cranepool hitting just 180. He has one home run. Left on left now. There's a pitch from Crane Pool, from Holtzman to Crane Pool, rather, a 2 5 base hit up the middle. A one out single for Crane Pool, the Mets' first hit of the ball game. And here he comes, the man of the hour, Jerry Grody. Rest in peace, Jerry. Excellent defensive catcher for many years. Even in his older years, he was a good catcher. I think he caught it age 40 even. I mean, he caught a long time. No, he caught at age 38. I remember he finished his career with the Dodgers. 70, 77, 78. Did not play in 1980 for some reason. And in 81, he started the year with Kansas City and ended up going back to the Dodgers where he had a whopping total of two at-bats. But I remember in 77 and 78, he was still a fine catcher in his mid-30s, well past his prime. He was amazing in, in the glory years of the Mets, 69-73. So here's the pitch now from the stretch to Jerry Grody. 4-6, he pops him up. That's going to be Kessinger under it. And there's two down, and here comes Gardner. Gardner also a right-handed batter. And the pitch from Holtzman is a 1-8. Struck him out. And that'll do it.
No runs to hit, one left. So Holtzman looking very tough today, and he's got a five-run lead after two. Gardner settled down in the second. He'll come back out for the third. It'll be Santo, Bacabella, and Brown for Chicago. Santo, of course, that big two-run triple in the first. Gardner gets the sign. And here's the pitch to Santo. It's going to be a 6-4 right-handed. Grounder to third base X. That's Boyer, a 2-E26. Boyer ranging towards the line. And here's the play on a 1. He's not going to get it. That's through for a base hit. That would have been a tough play for anybody. And Santo is aboard with a leadoff single. And here's Bacabella. They may have to get some length out of Fisher, too. Jack Fisher joins Dave Eilers in the New York pen. And here's Bacabella. Bacabella 0 for 1. Gardner from the stretch. It's going to be a 6-2 right-handed. Grounder to first X. That'll be Crane Pool, a 3-E-13. Could be two. Here's the roll on the play. It's a 20, and sure enough, it is two. Crane pool down to McMillan, back to Crane pool. Oh my goodness, the 363. 363 X, no last runner is erased. And with two down, it'll be Byron Brown. Brown with a two run homer in the first inning. Gardner staring in now, the pitch to Brown. 2-9 left-handed. He struck him out. No runs a hit. Nobody left. Gardner appearing to settle down now. He's only an S5 for endurance, so I wouldn't expect miracles, but maybe he can hang in there and give him some innings. Holtzman looking in complete command on his end so far, and it'll be the top of the New York lineup in the bottom of the third, Brassu, McMillan, and Boyer. Eddie Brassu struck out his first time today. Holtzman gets the sign from Hundley, and here's the pitch. It's going to be a 2-6 left-handed. Fly ball to left field and playable. Brown's right there to make the catch one away. I know, man, I missed it. For one thing, my computer, it's hard for me to see the computer screen with my reading glasses on. And it's set back behind the top of the score sheet, basically. So with the length of the laptop itself, the keyboard, in other words, the screen is pushed right up to the back of the desk, actually over the back of the desk and leaning against the back of the couch. And yes, it's Eclipse Day, Franklin, and welcome. It already passed, didn't it? Or which way is it moving? It passed here. It was at 10.40 a.m. Boy, you're right, Ben. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do about that? So Hickman actually should have batted there. Oh, what a nightmare. Well, other than replay back to that point, I don't really know what else to do. So I'm just going to let it go. I'll have to figure it out when I enter the game manually. Could move Jones at bat to the second. Well, that's true, it does. 
Yeah, that's probably the way to do it. So Jones would be there. My apologies, guys, and thank you for the catch, Ben. And that's the cleanest way to handle it at this point. Not exactly accurate, and I realize that, and I do apologize. So here's the pitch to McMillan, two out, nobody on. Two, four, struck him out. Well, the way Holtzman is pitching, it may not make any difference. We're through three. It's five to nothing, Chicago. So one thing remains the same. The Cubs jumped all over Rob Gardner in the first inning. Five hits, including a triple and a home run. And now here's Hundley to lead it off for the Cubs in the fourth inning. Hundley 0 for 1. Gardner, the wind up and the pitch. That's a 4 8 right handed base hit into left field. Lead off single for Hundley. No threat to run, as is the case with most catchers. Kessinger and A. Bunter. Boy, don't you hate that? You've got a bunt situation, but you've got the pitcher on deck. Kessinger switch hitter batting right. Gardner from the stretch. It's going to be a 3-6 ground ball to third base. Boyer down to pursue to Crane Pool, not in time. So a 5-4 force. And Kessinger's aboard. Kessinger can steal. He's a star 15. Let's check the Mets. We did check the Mets. That's a minus one. So 14. He'll be held on, making him a 12. And Holtzman will hit away. Pitch to Holtzman. 1-6. He struck him out. Two outs. Man on first. And here's Adolfo Phillips. Adolfo, one for two. And it's a 2-9, swung on and missed, strike three. So Gardner, looking pretty good out there after the first. Pitched three nice innings, no runs to hit, one left. Maybe too little too late. Oh, it's far from over. I'm not saying that, but it's a mountain to climb against Ken Holtzman. And the heart of the order will be, be due up for the Mets here in the bottom of the fourth. That's Boyer, Swoboda, and Cleon. Boyer 0 for 1. Right-handed batter. Holtzman the winder. Here's the pitch. It's a 1-9. It's a triple to 3. That's going to be down for in left center. Roll to the wall. Boyer rounding. He's in with a stand-up double. So a 1-9 double, triple to three. And that'll bring up Swoboda. Swoboda struck out his first time against Holtzman. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. That's going to be a 5-7 right-handed. Triple on a one, but that's going to hold up in center for Phillips. Drifting back now. Makes the catch for the out. Boyer can tag up on that. 12. Wait a minute. That's to center, so we can't tag up on that. I take that back. Can only tag up to third on a B to right field. Okay, here's Swoboda now with one down. Never mind. Here's, here's Cleon with one down. Sabota flew out to center. Cleon 0 for 1. Here's the pitch. It's a 1-3 left-handed. Grounder to first base. Bacabella could take it to the bag as Boyer moves into third base. 
So runner on third, two away, and here's Jim Hickman. Hickman's got a little pop, although most of it against right-handed pitching, interestingly enough. He's 0 for 1. And here's the pitch from Holtzman. It's a 2-4. He pops him up. Kessinger makes the play, and that'll do it. No runs a hit, one left. We're through four in New York. It's 5 to nothing Cubs. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me today. Kind of a cloudy, gloomy day in Spokane. Oh, I had a bunch of stuff I was supposed to get done. And you know what? I just said fork it. I'm just going to play and maybe watch some baseball later. For Gardner, he'll be entering his first inning of potential fatigue. Glenn Becker to lead things off here in the fifth. Glenn's one for two today. Gardner into the windup. Here's the pitch to Becker. That's going to be a 2 6 lefty. It's a fly to center and playable for Cleon Jones, who makes the play one down. Here's Billy Williams now. Williams, one for two. Left on left, here's the pitch. It's a 1-7, a ground ball to second base. Pursue fields it cleanly. Sidearm to Crane Pool, and there's two away. This will be Gardner's last inning regardless, as he's due to bat third in the bottom of the inning. And here's the pitch to Ron Sando now. Sando two for two. It's a 4-10, fly to left and shallow. Soboda has it. So one, two, three inning for Gardner. So Gardner, after getting hammered in the first, settles down. And that'll be all for Gardner. He goes five innings today. Seven hits, five runs. Walk just one and struck out three. Jack Fisher is gonna act as the long man today. Right now, two outs in the third. Are you watching a game right now, Ben? Oh, you're still talking about the other thing, I guess. To the bottom of the fifth we go, Holtzman with a 5 nothing lead here. Bottom of the order, Crane Pool, Grody, and the pitcher's spot. Crane Pool. Standing in from the left side. Holtzman gets the sign. Here's the pitch. A 2 6 base hit into center field for Crane Pool, and he's 2 for 2. So Ed Crane Pool with the leadoff single. And welcome, Jeffrey Guterman. Here's Grody now. 0 for 1 so far. Holtzman from the stretch. Takes to Grody is a 4 6. Pops him up. Same number as last time. To short. Kessinger. One away. And now we'll have a pinch hitter for Gardner. And who's it going to be? I'm on my own in this one. They use no subs in this game in real life. Left-hander on the mound. Oh, heck, let's get Ron Hunt up there. Maybe he can get hit by a pitch and inside a bases clearing brawl. 
Oh my, he can do how to get hit by a fish, that's for sure. Crane Fool takes his lead. Holtzman from the stretch. The pitch to Hunt. 2-5. That's a grounder to shortstop. Kessinger has it. To Becker. To Bacabella. Double play. So Hunt grounds into the inning-ending double play. No runs to hit. None left on. Absolutely, Kenyon, yet sure feels that way, doesn't it? Here comes Fisher. He has a lot of innings to spend. And he also is four rated for relief, so he seems like a good choice here. What's he done in the replay? Well, let's take a look. He's been in five games. Four of them were starts. He's 0-4 with a 7.54 across 23 innings. 33 hits, only nine strikeouts. Perfect situation for him to come in, in other words. Basically a mop-up role today. And here's Bacabella to lead things off for the Cubs in the sixth. I know, Franklin, anything's possible. This is Stratomatic. I'm with you there. Bacabella 0 for 2. Fisher, the one guard. 112, tap her down to short. That's, Mc, that's uh, McMillan. He's got it, throws him out. Here's Brown now, 1 for 2 with a home run. Here's the pitch. It's a 6-5 righty. Double to two. That's going to be a long single for Byron Brown. And Byron's two for three. So Brown with a one-out single. And here's Randy Hundley. Hundley as well. And Grody. It's a game featuring two of the, two of the finest defensive receivers of their era. And there's Rick. Welcome, Rick. Yes, he does, Rick. Holtzman does have a good card for a 379 ERA. Fisher from the stretch. Here's Hundley. It's going to be a 4 5 fly to right field. Hickman patrolling. He's there to make the catch. And that's the second out of the inning. And here's Kessinger. Kessinger will turn around and bat left against Fisher. From the start now, pitch to Kessinger is a 2-8 single, two stars. Brown rounds and heads into third. And fortunately for Fisher, Ken Holtzman is the batter. Right-handed hitter. And here's the pitch on a 5-3. That's going to be a single two stars by a Holtzman. Let's make sure he's not an N. He's not. Okay, he gets a single on that. 5-3 at righty is a homer to 17. Holtzman a week. He'll have himself an RBI single. Brown scores. Kessinger to third, and it's 6 to nothing. So even the Cubs pitchers are hitting today. And here's Phillips. Fisher trying to get out of this inning. Pitch to Phillips is a 6-6. Six, six. That's a double to two. Single two stars. Kessinger will score. And the route is on. It's seven to nothing. Holtzman will take third. And they won't even bother to hold Phillips. He's not even going to... Think about stealing up seven to nothing. Yeah, and I heard about the about Ben's game with the Goldschmidt opening the floodgates. Here is Becker. Pitch from Fisher of five seven struck him out. And the inning comes to an end, but two more for the Cubs on four more hits. Good gravy. Nine. They have 11 hits in the game through six innings. 
And it's seven to nothing. And the way Holtzman's pitching right now, it feels like about 12. Top of the order for the Mets. Here's Pursue. Well, they can't all be great games, guys. <laughs> what could I say? Holtz in the windup. The pitch to Eddie is 2 6. Fly to left field. Playable for Brown. He's got it. And here's McMillan now. 0 for 1 with a walk. Holtzman aside from Hundley, the windup. The pitch to McMillan, a 5 7. Right handed is a triple to 1. That's going to be a fly ball to center for Adolfo Phillips. Two outs, nobody on, and here's Ken Boyer. Boyer, one for two, doubled in the fourth. Holtzman gets the sign. 6-5 right-handed. That's a high fly ball to left field, backing up his Brown. That's going to drop and roll into the corner. Brown picks it up. Boyer rounding, and he's in with a triple. Let's take another look at that one. 6-5 righty. Homer to 15, the roll is a 20, and Boyer has himself a triple, the second triple of the ball game. So the Cubs, rather the Mets, can't get any breaks today. That almost went out of here. Hey, it's supposed to be an eclipse, not an earthquake. Here's Swoboda. Holtzman's delivery of 4-11. Base hit into left. So Boyer will cross the plate with the first run of the day for the Mets. RBI single for Ron Swoboda, and it is 7-1. Here comes the two-out rally. Here's Cleon now, 0 for 2. Holtzman from the start. To Cleon, a 1 9 left handed grounder to second. That's Beckert to Bacabella, and that will do it. So, one run, two hits, they leave him in. Yeah, Rick, I remember him there. And I'll tell you what, they hardly lost anything when he did, and Jaeger was a magnificent defensive catcher, very underrated. The best Jaeger play in my mind was the snap throw to first. There was nobody ever any better than Jaeger at the snap throw to first. I'd like to know how many guys he picked off doing that. Because it was more than a few times. I can tell you that from memory. On to the seventh we go. I'll probably move things along a little quicker in a 7-1 to one ball game. Here's Billy Williams now. One for three. His big triple in the first. Followed by the home run by Brown. That was the damage. Fisher into the windup. The pitch to Billy. A 3-11 right-handed. Base hit up the middle. So Williams heating it up now. Two for four. And here's Santo. Ron Santo, two for three today. Fisher gets his sign from the stretch. Fisher Santo is a 2 12. Liner to third, back to first, double play. Oh, 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 oh my. An L5 DP. Line out to the max. In this case, the max is two. I do. Yeah, and then he invented that thing that hung down from the mask and all the catchers were using it for many years till they developed the, the modern equipment. And of course his uncle, Chuck Yeager, was the first pilot to break the sound barrier. So here's Bacabella, two outs, nobody on. 
Fisher, the wines and deals. It's a 2 8 to shortstop ground ball. McMillan, smooth play to Crane Pool, and that'll do it. No runs to hit, nobody left. Yeah, bingo, Ben. And Ben wins the Cadbury egg. Okay, I gotta knock that off. Easter's long gone now. I have to come up with a new prize. How about a pair of uh, slightly used Eclipse sunglasses? <laughs> or, you know, we could, uh, as the tubes in their song, what do you want from life? If a personally autographed picture of Randy Mantooth. Or a baby's arm holding an apple. Here's Jim Hickman to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Holds from the windup. That counts. It's a 4-4 four, four right-handed, and he draws the walk. So Hickman aboard to lead off the seventh, and here's Crane Pool. Crane Pool two for two today. It's going to be a 2 10 single into right field open. Hickman can go on that. He's rounding. He's a 12. Williams a plus one to third. 13 15. He's going. They'll cut it off. He's just going to go into third uncontested. And the Mets have something going here in the bottom of the seventh. Runners at the corners. Nobody out. And here's Grody. Boy, wouldn't it be something if Grody could do something here? Popped a short twice. Infield at double play depth now. Holtzman's pitch, a 4-7, struck him out. And now we'll have a pinch hitter for Fisher. So Fisher worked two innings, gave up six hits. Two runs, no walks, one strikeout. And at this point, it's going to be Eilers. There's no point wasting. They've got Hepler and Sutherland down there, but I don't even see any point wasting them. A lot of left-handers on this bench. Could be him. Oh, hell, let's give Dick Stewart an at-bat. Let's have some fun with it, right? If we're going to have a blowout, let's have some fun with it. Dr. Strangeglove grabs a bat. He has very good power against left-handers. Two men on, one down. Holtzman gets the sign from Hundley. Now from the stretch. To Dick Stewart, a 5-E-11 as a grounder to first base X. That's Bacabella, a 3-E-7. Here's the play. On a 4, he's not going to get that. That's a single one star. Hickman will score. Crane Pool holds it second. And it's 7-2. to two. And here's Eddie Brasseau. First and second, one down. Holtzman from the stretch. Action in the Cub bullpen. 6-8, swung on and missed strike three. In fact, Holtzman, Holtzman is fatigued. Holy cow, I missed the walk. I don't normally do it, but I'm going to try to let him finish the inning fatigued. And that was a 6-8. Hang on a second. I think I read that wrong. Give me a minute here.
there's Stuart. Replay review, just want to make sure. Here's Eddie Brissou on a 6-8. He walked. He walked to load the bases. And here comes DeRocher, and that's going to do it for Holtzman now. So Holtzman runs out of gas in the seventh, right on cue. He pitched a one batter fatigued and walked him, and that was enough for DeRocher. They also did not use a reliever in this game. Both starters went the distance in real life. So the question is, who's got the innings? Well, that's going to be Fergie. Fergie's got innings to burn. So Holtzman winds up going six and two-thirds. Seven hits, three walks, two, four, five strikeouts. Isn't that something how that works with Stratomatic Endurance? Holtzman sailing along through six and just runs out of gas in the seventh. And Fergie Jenkins will come out, acting as the long man out of the Chicago pen. So Crane Poole on third, Dr. Strange Glove on second, Eddie Brasseau at first, and here's McMillan. McMillan 0 for 2 with a walk. Jenkins ready to go now, there's two outs. No, there's one out. Excuse me. Walk, single, K, single, walk. One away. Base is loaded. Seven to two. The Mets can get back into this game here. Franklin, you called it, man, I tell you. Here's the pitch from Fergie. It's going to be a one to five. Base hit into center. That's an open single. Hickman will score. Stewart, a one through eight, will hold up. Actually, Crane, excuse me, Crane Pool will score. I got a mess of the score sheet in this inning, that's for sure. So Stewart goes to third. It's seven to three. And here comes Ken Boyer with Ron Swoboda on deck. Holy cow, suddenly we've got a game. Here, I thought we had a laugher. Boyer represents the tying run at the plate. Jenkins, one flaw. I love Fergie to death. But one of his flaws, as you know, was the gopher ball. Mostly because he always threw strikes. He never walked anybody. Here is Boyer, two for three, a double and a triple today. Base is loaded, one out. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a 4-8 swung on and missed strike three. Well, a big strikeout for Fergie Jenkins. And here's Swoboda now. Swoboda one for three today. Two down. The one down. Pitch to Swoboda, a 3-9, swung on and missed strike three. Jenkins came in, allowed the single, and then struck out the next two batters to get out of the inning. 
Two runs for the Mets on three hits, and they leave the bases loaded. Was that their was that their chance? Their only chance, or where there'll be another? New pitcher for the Mets. Eilers was ready. We'll start out with him. Computer only card. Eilers on the season has only been in one game. He pitched two scoreless innings. Now they're on we're kind of in the game. Wow, they are really in a mess with this bullpen here. Sutherland's taking the jacket off. Eilers will start the inning at least. And here's Byron Brown to lead things off. Brown two for three, homered in the first. The pitch from Eilers is a 1-8, struck him out. And here's Randy Hundley. Eilers gets the sign from Cody. Now here's the pitch, a 4-5. It's a grounder to third. Boyer has it over to Crane Pool, two away. I know it's hard to read the Eilers card, but it is not a good card. Here's Kessinger hitting left-handed. That'll be a 2-7 ground ball to second base. Pursue has it cleanly, flips to Crane Pool, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Dave Eilers. How about that? And Jenkins will come out for the eight. Jones, Hickman, and Cranepool will do for the Mets. Cleon 0 for 3 today. Jenkins, the sign from Hundley. Pitch to Cleon is a 4 4 right handed. Catcher's card X, and that's Hundley, a 2 E6. And here's the play. On a 19, it's a foul out to the catcher. So nice play, Hundley. And here's Hickman now. Jim Hickman, 0 for 2 with a walk. The pitch from Fergie is a 1-8. Swung on and missed strike three. So Fergie now has fanned three of the last four batters he's faced. Fergie, a rough start to the year, you know. In the replay, he is one and two with an ERA of nine. And here's Crane Pool, three for three today. Jenkins, the windup. It's a six six left handed fly to center. That's playable for Phillips, and it's a one two three inning for Fergie, and the Mets are running out of outs. Eilers will come back out. Fergie will hit. He's a six in. He's a good hitting pitcher. So we'll get a new pitcher's hitting card out here. And here we go. Right-handed batter. Pitch from Eilers, a 5-3. Grounder to the pitcher, X. That's a 4-E-0. And here's the play. E rating on a 0. He makes the play. Nice play, Eilers. 1-3-X, that'll be scored. And Franklin says, I'm beginning to tell the difference in the cards. Not sure what that means. Uh, feel free to elaborate on that, Franklin. 
You could read the cards, right? Hopefully it's clear enough. Here's Phillips with one away. Eiler Sarando. Pitch to Adolfo, a 3-6. That's ripped down over the bag and third base bag down in the left field corner. Brown, rather Swoboda, picking it up. And Adolfo in with a double. Yes, right. Yeah, he came over in that big trade early in April with Adolfo Phillips. And uh, who else came over in that? Bob Buell. Or no, Buell went to the Phillies. Buell went the other way in the trade. Now I'm confused. Anyway, it was something like that. So Phillips on second, one out. Larry Jackson, I think, was in that deal. Here's Becker, one for four. The pitch from Eilers. It's a 5-10 right-handed. A grounder to third base X. That's going to be Boyer, a 2-E26. And here's the play. That's going to be a 7 error rating. 10 on a 26, and he boots it. Error Boyer. First error of the ball game. Under normal circumstances. I might think of getting Eilers out of here. Let me look at his card again. Yeah, it's time for Gordy Richardson. Another computer-only card. As mentioned previously, the Mets shorthanded in the pen today. Selma and Bernarth are unavailable. And Tug McGraw is starting the, the, either the next game or the game after that. So that'll do it for Eilers. He goes one and a third. One hit. He didn't pitch badly. He got burned by the error, really. No walks and a K. Richardson, a very backwards right hand. It's left Richardson, a left-hander. Excuse me. He'll be brought in to face Billy Williams with runners at the corners and one out. So here's Richardson from the stretch to pitch to Billy. That's a 3-10 high fly ball deep to right field. Backing up is Hickman. He makes the catch on the track. That's enough for Phillips to tag up and score easily. And it's 8-3. Sack fly to right. That's an RBI for Billy. With three more RBIs today. Billy Williams now has 14. So he's moving up. Two down and here's Santo. Ron Santo, two for four today. Pitch from Richardson is a 4-11 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. So Richardson gets the two outs, one of them a fly ball deep enough to get a run. One run, one hit, one left. There was an error. We go to the bottom of the ninth, eight to three, Cubs. And Jenkins is coming back out. He's worked one and two thirds so far. It'll be Grody, the pitcher's spot, and Brasseau. We might even have a hitter for Brasseau. So here's Grody to lead it off. Grody 0 for 3 today. 
That's a 2 7. Struck him out. So Grody goes down on strikes for the second time. And we will have a hitter for Richardson. And that'll be Al Luplo coming off the bench. Luplo, a left-handed hitter. Al Luplo, Luplo, excuse me, Al Luplo, <laughs> tongue-tied, a left-handed hitting outfielder. Seven for 26 on the season, 269. He does have a pair of home runs. Jenkins into the windup. Pitch to Luplo, 5'10", left-handed, flight to right and shallow. Here comes Billy Williams to make the catch. And the Mets are down to their last out. Let's see if they have somebody better than Brissou. He's not terrible. Most of it's walks. He batted 225. I suppose a walk is as good of a hit in this situation. Yeah, they're going to hit with Chuck Hiller here. We'll bat for Basu. Basu is 0 for 3 with a walk. Chuck Hiller, left-handed hitting infielder, will come on and hit for him. Hiller, 222, just 2 for 9. He does have 1 RBI. The pitch from Jenkins. 2-7, base hit up the middle, and Hiller comes through. Two-out single for Hiller. Still life in New York here, and here's Roy McMillan. You'd almost like to hit for him as well, but how many infielders do they have? Ah, what the heck. Let's let Johnny Lewis come up and bat for McMillan. We could put Hiller at second, and they've got Bud Harrelson on the bench. Might as well have some fun with this, right? So Johnny Lewis, who has some pop. Lewis hitting just 160. He is 4 for 25, two ribbies. Jenkins trying to close it out now. Men on first, two down. It's a 2-9, swung on and missed strike three, and that's the game. No runs to hit, one left. 8-3 to three is the final. The story pretty much all occurred in the first inning when the Cubs jumped all over Gardner for five runs. The big blow is a Billy Williams triple and a Brown two-run homer. Oh, wow, Jeffrey. Hooley and Javi are three errors in an inning, and he was a good second baseman, very good second baseman. It can happen. You said it yourself. It happens to the best of them. Well, let's get the totals for you. Pretty easy win for the Cubs today, but you're right, Ben. Yeah, you throw out that first inning. It was a good ball game. Gardner just put them in a hole early from which they could not recover. One K. That closes the book on Eilers. Gardner, of course, takes the loss. He drops to 0 and 3. Fergie, two and two thirds. 
So Gardner only worked six and a third. That isn't, this isn't right. Holtzman worked six and a third, rather. This isn't right. His Jenkins worked two and two thirds. He got two outs in the seventh, so he gave up two hits. No runs. All three runs charged to Holtzman. Fergie walked nobody as usual. And look at that, he struck out five. Does he get a save for that? Let's see, it was the seventh. It was seven to one at the time, so no, there won't be any save. Holtzman ends up with the win, he's two and one. Totals on the game for the Cubs, they got eight runs on 14 hits, no errors. Mets three runs, nine hits, they made one error. Chief Spokane Gary, player of the game. Uh, it's going to be co-players of the game today. Billy Williams and Byron Brown will share the honors. Williams, two for, two for five, three RBIs, a triple. Brown, two for four, and a two-run homer. That was pretty much the game right there. Bam, bam. Williams and Brown share the Chief Spokane Gary player of the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. For those of you who don't know, I haven't said it in a while, but Chief Spokane Gary was the guy who founded the city of Spokane. It was named after him. So I'm going to get out of here. Let's look ahead on the schedule now. Tomorrow's game at 1.30 p.m. Pacific will be the Pittsburgh Pirates at the Philadelphia Phillies. The battle for Pennsylvania. Don Schwal on the mound for the Bucks. Bob Buell, that we just mentioned him, he came over in that trade of the Ferguson Jenkins deal from the Cubs. Bob Buell starting for the Phillies. So that's it for me, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hit that like button on your way out. And uh, everybody, please have a very pleasant evening. Eclipse Day. Take care.